Right, hello and welcome to the channel. Another video, uh, slightly different today. I just want to talk about Git, how I use it, and um, just show my uh, workflow, and maybe you'll learn a thing or two. So I I learned this way a long time ago, um, some commands when I just joined uh, my first uh, company as a junior developer. I believe at some point um, I just... Uh, noticed how one of the senior developers was doing his uh, commands and uh, he showed me quite a lot. Uh, obviously since that I checked like a proper book on Git uh, etc. But uh, in the nutshell uh, it's not much command that, command that you need uh, and I'll show everything in this video. And also uh, I uh, mostly use uh, CLI uh, to interact with Git um, but uh, I don't mind if like people use a UI if that's uh, uh, easy for you if, if that's uh, um, convenient uh, I don't see any problem but for me uh, I just tend to jump into CLI and uh, work from from the terminal so yeah let's jump jump straight in um, I have a um, project that I'll show you. Um, that's my closure service template. Uh, we'll just use it as an example. Uh, so first of all, we can check status with git status. The other useful thing is I have a separate uh, separate tool called tig, uh, which is git in reverse. Uh, so you can install it by doing brew, brew install tig or something like that. And it basically will uh, show you the history of your commits in slightly better way compared to a native git log uh, and then you can jump just go inside inside uh, changes and see them uh, this kind of like uh, vim bindings enabled so i can use jn key uh, k to go up and down um, and there's like a bunch of options that you can use um, I don't know much of that, so I'm definitely not a power user of this tool. Uh, it could be, it could do much more. Uh, my use case is just uh, to quickly uh, go through the history uh, and maybe go through some changes. So yeah, here we have um, here on, on the master branch. Uh, one thing I use uh, pretty often is that, for example, I have this project CLJ file as you can see modified. And if I want to uh, change, uh, switch to a branch, it will say that I have uncommitted uh, changes. So the command I usually use is git stash. Uh, it just removes uh, the changes that you have uncommitted. And then when you can, when you can go, when you go back to that branch, you can do uh, git stash apply, and it will reapply your uncommitted changes that were stored in this stash. So for now, let's do git stash again. And uh, in m like r many recent years, uh, the companies I was working are following this so-called trunk-based development uh, flow, which basically means in simple terms that you commit to master uh, as much as you can. Uh, and you avoid a long uh, living development branches. In that case, you have like a single uh, source of truth and uh, it just reduces the amount of conflicts, etc. because your master branch is supposed to be in good state uh, all the time. It comes with other challenges, uh, so you need to make sure that your code uh, could be uh, deployed to development production, but it's kind of out of scope of this video. Um, but some people are really strict about trunk-based development. They say you need only master branch and you need to commit straight into that. I personally don't um, completely understand why. So in my case, I still prefer short feature branches. Uh, when I work on some change, I usually open a branch, then I do the changes and then uh, it shouldn't take more than a day for this uh, block of work that I want to commit to master. So after that, I raise PR or I do a pair programming with someone and we just review the changes and then we merge it to uh, master. I just appreciate that moment when you can use GitHub, for example, as a UI to review all your changes before you merge them back to master. I still consider that trunk-based development, to be honest, but some people disagree. 
right, how we create the branch, right? So there is a git checkout minus b, and then you type uh, the branch branch name. I also have a, an alias uh, in fish shell for me to, to do that quicker and save a bit of typing. Uh, so I have functions uh, gcb, um, which stands for git checkout minus b. Um, that's what I used to over the years. Um, and that's basically an alias to this. So what I can do is uh, G, um, gcb, and then feature uh, git demo, git demo branch. And now we on our new branch, right? So after that, you basically do some changes here and there. Um, let's go to some to core namespace, for example. Um, change something here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what I want to show, and uh, actually this thing, I haven't seen much used by uh, other developers, but that's basically the backbone of what I'm doing with Git, right? And uh, it is uh, interactive mode. So one of the ways, uh, for example, git status, um, for example, we have these files, right? So you, you can do something like git add and then the file name, I believe. Um, I don't even sure because yeah, I usually don't do that. You see, now I have a project CLJ added to to the uh, to the stage, right? Uh, but what I usually do is a git add minus e, and yeah, I'm I really used to that thing. So basically, it allows you to add files, revert files in this uh, interactive uh, way. So uh, two most commonly used options here is two for update and four for add untracked. But we can also check this revert as well. So if I type three now, uh, we are in this revert uh, option and I can now remove the project CLJ changes that I already added. Um, and I just use one as it's the first line. Uh, then you, you can notice this, uh, uh, this star right here, which basically means this file will be uh, reverted and hit enter. And now if I close it with seven, uh, I do git status again, and it's back like two files are modified, but not added to, to be committed. Right. So let's go once again to git, uh, status. Oh no, wait, uh, git a, um, add minus E, but actually I want to have more files change. So let's go to uh, handlers, um, for example, this one, let's change something here, maybe here. And then I want to, uh, let's say, copy paste my readme file with a different name, readme2, org, and uh, uh, IntelliJ just asks you if you want to add it to Git. I sometimes use this uh, for simplicity, but for the sake of demo, I'll just uh, cancel it. So now you see this red file, which basically means it's not tracked by git um, for now. So let's see what we have inside our git add minus e now. So now we have more files uh, uh, changed. Um, and uh, if I go to a second option, which is add uh, to the stage, uh, now I can pick files, uh, files that I want to add. If you want to add all, um, it's basically you do something like one to four, um, that will uh, mark all of those, but there are different um, different syntaxes for that. So let's um, and and it's uh, it works in all of these tabs uh, similarly. So if I go to three and I want, for example, to remove one and three, I can do uh, the comma thing. And for example, if I want to uh, combine that with range, it will work as well. So let's say I want to remove one and then uh, three and four. So I can use uh, the range here. So as you can see, it's quite flexible, right? So again, if I want to add all, I do this. And also don't forget that we added file, but we haven't added it to Git yet. So it will be uh, under four, uh, option four, and it's called add untracked. And I can do it right here as well. So now um, everything is uh, added. 
I can see it in TIG that it says that I have some stage changes and then I do the commit, right? One way you do this, uh, you do commit is something like uh, git commit minus M and um, commit message, commit message. Uh, that's one way. Um, I usually, when I merge my PR, I usually use uh, the option called uh, squash and merge or squash on, or and rebase. And um, basically I just want one good commit message because I usually uh, squash them all together. So I don't really, really mind if I use some random messages like fix or change or whatever in my short-lived uh, branch that I will eventually commit at the end of the day or the next day, uh, merge into master the next day or the end of the day. So for that, I have another uh, function uh, and I don't know why I have this name, but yeah, many years ago, I was just trying to create some aliases and that's what I have. So GG fix stands for git commit with message fix. And um, it's basically a quick way for me to add some changes. So let's go, for example, I, I want to change some file. I update it here. I go to here, git add minus E to one. Boom, that's it. Uh, I edit the file and then I do gg fix. And now I have new commit right here. You can see the top one fix. All right, so um, what next? Basically, then you just do git push uh, uh, origin and uh, my branch, so feed uh, git demo. And uh, that will be pushed to my repo and I can raise a, create a PR. And actually it's quite handy here because you can just click this link and it will uh, sh uh, show you uh, the UI in GitHub to create your PR, right? Uh, but what else? Uh, if, if I want to go back to, um, to the master branch, um, you can do git checkout master, obviously. Uh, I have an ls as well, so it will be function uh, gcm. And this is git checkout master and git pull origin master, so I, it's like two commands in one. I want to go to the master, but I want to be sure that I pulled the recent changes. So I just use this gcm, and it's switching to the, to the master, and it's trying to pull the changes for me. So git checkout, um, and we go back to our... Uh, branch because I want to show you a couple more things. So uh, I'm not just adding files uh, in interactive mode. Uh, you can also do rebase um, in the same mode as well. So one of the options is uh, what I sometimes do is if you want uh, to squash your commits in your branch, uh, you can just uh, start from the head and count the number of commits you want to squash. So let's say we have two right now. So what I want to do is git um, rebase and you note this minus E and then head and two. So it basically says take uh, two commits uh, in this branch and uh, rebase them with the rules I will specify in the interactive mode. Um, when, when I hit enter, uh, it will open the file in uh, IntelliJ. And that's because I have my uh, git uh, config editor uh, configured to be IntelliJ IDEA. So by default, I believe it's nano and it worked fine for me over the time. Uh, I just recently switched it to IntelliJ uh, because if you have a lot of commits, you can just uh, use um, uh, features like multi-cursor in IntelliJ to uh, change a bunch of lines at the same time, which saves a lot of time. But obviously, if you like a Veeam, NeoVeeam user, um, you probably want your editor to be NeoVeeam here, right? Um, let me just show what I mean. So let's go back to our git rebase minus i head of two. You can see um, it's now waiting for uh, a save in the file. So you see the file is opened here. And as I have 
usually IntelliJ uh, opened because I work from the terminal from the from the IDE. Uh, I don't waste any time opening the file because it's really quick. Uh, but if you just on the command line and you have all your IntelliJ uh, instances closed, it will obviously spend a bit of time opening it. Um, so what I mean here, there's a bunch of options. Uh, one of one of the things I use is this fix up. So basically it will take a commit that you mark as fix up and then it will squash it to the previous one keeping the original message. So for example, I want to remove uh, this commit, but I want to keep the changes, right? So I can do fix here. And imagine if you have multiple lines like this, like 10 lines, you can just go with multi cursor here and change everything to F. And it basically means with you'll pick the first commit as the message and then you squash all other changes inside this first commit. So that's it. Uh, and um, I just need to close this file now, but I'm in uh, exit destruction free mode. Um, so basically that's out of save in uh, IntelliJ, so I don't need to save it. Uh, I just want to close it, right? And it says successfully rebase and update it. So I messed up a bit with uh, the branches. So let's let's do it uh, once again. I was working on another branch that I never pushed to GitHub actually. So let's do it once again. So we have tig and we have two two messages, uh, two commits right here. We do git rebase minus c head of two. Uh, then instead of here, I do fix up. Uh, I close the window. It should rebase. Uh, yes, I have one commit. And now if I do git push origin git uh, demo, uh, it will probably, yeah, it will say that I cannot push it because uh, I like broke the chain of commits, right? Um, but as I have these short-lived branch, branches, I'm just happy to do minus F, which is force. And yeah, now I have my updated uh, feature branch with just one commit. Uh, but the use case for that rebase uh, is not too frequent. Uh, as I said, I just tend to use uh, the feature in GitHub itself. When you review the PI and when you're ready to merge, you can just squash all commits just in the UI. But yeah, it's uh, good to know that you can do this interactive mode when you do uh, rebases. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, if you haven't tried uh, git uh, minus e for different commands, I just really suggest you do because it's really time time saver for me. And it's even if if it's on the command line for me, it's the most convenient way uh, to work with git because because I have all this control uh, and I don't rely on any kind of UI. I can do the same flow um, on the remote server and locally and it just worked really nice for me so let me know what you think share your own flows with git um, in the comments um, and yeah please like and subscribe see you in the next video bye bye